Hey, we got everybody that's going to come. So, oh, wait a minute. We got to wait on Bodie. He'll be here. This is going to be live on uh, Facebook and eventually YouTube. So. Where's Jason at? Thank you for inviting me to come do this. I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, it's a fantastic venue. I, you know what? I'm trying to blow sunshine up your butt, not your butt. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Thank you very much. The original kind of talk was going to be the politics of manhood, the key to success, and everything else. That's kind of a kind of a catch-all term, success. It's very difficult to people get confused with how they're going to determine success in their life. So we got to start off kind of simple. We got to start at the very basics. Uh, where do I stand? And who am I? And all of these other questions seem to come in. I see this guy doing that. Well, maybe I ought to be doing that to determine my success. I see this guy doing this. Maybe I ought to do this for me for, uh, to be successful. And I think originally it has to start with the confidence in who and what we are. Our ability to be confident in ourselves as men is, is really a cornerstone of everything we're going to achieve in life. And I'm going to do this with Donald Trump does it, and it's kind of addictive. <laughs> As a man thinks, so he is. There's that may not be from our face, but I'm gonna say right now, no true words have ever been put on paper. To change the man, you must change the mind. Okay, it's not like changing the decision from going to coke to diet coke. We're talking about a very uh, in-depth process train of thought that a man engages in on any given day. The first one is that 82 stanzas of the have them all are an outline of how a man should be thinking in that day and age. He's the first thing he's going to do is going to think about other people before himself. When a guest comes in, where's he going to sit? Has he got something to drink and eat? Bravely and gladly, a man shall go to a day of his death is come. That's a very high-minded idea. But if we can maintain the kind of confident thought process that enables to feel positive in anything we're doing, we have the opportunity to bravely and gladly, we can go for the day of our death to come. Most of our thoughts are driven by narrative, fostered by an ego and righteous indignation, and it happens in varying degrees. We see it every day on Facebook. We see people who make a conscious decision to get wrapped up into some kind of online argument with regards to being right. And I heard an old lady tell me one time, uh, many years ago, she said, you know, I'd rather be happy than right. There's a lot of freedom in that. And in that kind of freedom, you will find the ability to think well of yourself. When we get wrapped up, we make the decision to get, to continue this narrative we've been taught all of our lives. We're going to continue to get the same kind of results. We're working a $50,000 a year job, that's because that's what we think we're worth. Because we saw our fathers do it. We saw our grandfathers do it. We've seen everyone around us work a job. Like, well, that must be what I'm worth. That's what I'm going to be. And that's what you get. How do you move past all that? How do you come into something else? Well, change the mind, you must change the man. Our lives will be made by our own thoughts and deeds. Nobody else it is in the our mind. Which determines if we are happy or unhappy, strong or weak, foolish or wise. If someone is unhappy, angry or wise, and indignant, that state of mind belongs to himself. It originates within him. It may well be in response to an outside influence, but the state of mind, the cause, lies within. Those are some powerful words. And that's, 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 quite frankly, it's disheartening to make that realization. I'm in the boat that I'm in because of the way that I think and act. I am in the I am moving through this world like everybody else that I see, and I'm in this position because of my thoughts and my actions. Not anybody else's. When we say deeds, not words, 
it is a very powerful reminder that it is our deeds which determine our future. Our thoughts, our deeds, our deeds are the descendants of our thoughts. Let me explain that a minute. Now I was talking about the <laughs> structure of the soul yesterday, and he kind of drifted off talking about Adam. He used to think that Adam was solid. And Eric, I think it was Aristotle had, he had a big problem with everything being made of Adam's, because Adam's didn't have any soul. It didn't make any sense to him. He disregarded that in some, in, in some aspects. But as we know now, if you get into those atoms, they're, they're little bitty bits of matter and a lot of bits of space, and they pop in and out of existence. There's a powerful aspect of that that we are able to tap into. People wonder, okay, well, that's kind of weird. How do we do that? How do we tap into that ability of these atoms to create, to, to become something more? Well, I'll get into that in just a minute, but this whole idea of our thoughts creating our world our ability to be men has its roots in that idea. I heard it best said, I'm going to use a pecan as an example. You can take a pecan and open that door up, and you will not find a pecan tree. You'll find a pecan. But when we put that pecan into the right ground, it will grow, and it will grow, and it will grow, and it will become one of the largest trees North America produces. And it will produce food for all kinds of creatures around it. See, it gets into a, a positive state, whatever you want to call it, just like our thoughts do, and it knows only one thing, and that is to grow and develop. We have that same opportunity. A man has no hair, no life, which is apart from his thoughts and deeds. If he is foolish, it's because he does foolish things. If he is weak will, it is a condition which is the result of continued thought and action of his own choosing and his continued choosing of such thoughts. Every bit of it is a learned response to given stimuli from the environment we have put ourselves in. Most of it get picked up from watching our parents do the same thing over and over, expecting different results. This is a madness which pervades our society like a cancer. When I say it is a learned response, when we look at our public education system, when we look at the schools, we take our children, we've been gifted this little bitty life that it is our responsibility to bring into the world and to, to allow it to grow to become everything it can become. That's a huge responsibility. That's a huge obligation. But it's also one of the most rewarding experiences in our life if we see that child grow up and to be something fantastic. How do we ensure that as men, we can create that environment? I think this is the this is the litmus test for anyone being a man, is that they might create that environment where the child or spouse might become everything they possibly can. There's a risk involved in that. See, we're all conditioned to accept life in a certain way. We watch our fathers, this is how you do it. If we change that, now all of a sudden our kids might do a little better now. What does that say about us? Do we not do everything we can do? Did we not strive for that success? Or did we simply wish for it because we saw computer nerds making billion dollar deals? Did we give it our best shot? Was our thought process tied up in something other than that success? Were we consciously getting involved in some kind of online argument that didn't do any kind of good? Did we carry resentment? All of these things, all of these thoughts take us to the left or to the right keep us from moving forward in what we need to be going forward in. A man is the right one. The re this rediscovery of our ancestral faith is reminding us of the gifts of our own daily faith. I'm not that we have to get to those interactions. Every time we get sucked into a useless argument, we lend our spiritual energy our, not only our mental, but our spiritual and our emotional energy gets pushed on to something that has no bearing on us creating an environment where our wives and children can become something more than we ever hoped for. Every, we have been gifted with the ability to change our character. Just like a sculptor modifies a piece of wood, stone or bronze to suit their idea, we have the ability to do the same thing with our lives. Where do we start? Man is mind. Mind is composed of thought, 
that thought is subject to change. To deliberately change the thought is to change the man. <laughs> no power, no event, no circumstance can compel a man to unhappiness or lack of shame. No being, however wise and great, can make a man good and happy. Each one of us is responsible to use these gifts good sense, direction, to make a choice for a good life. Our deviation from the societal norm, insofar as religion goes, is an indication that we understand there is a larger, higher, nobler life to be lived. Isn't that what brought most of us in here? Some kind of indication, some kind of clue, an inkling of an idea, some kind of pain in here, some kind of thought in here. It doesn't jive. This doesn't add up. This doesn't make sense. This, this got, there may be something to this. There may be something to this idea of Austria. There may be something to this idea of in goose, in being, caring, loving, doing, this idea of the God seed within each of us for us to become something more. How do we cultivate that idea of being into something that will work for us? It's such an alien and powerful concept that at first thought most men are terrified of because it will be a radical transformation from what we are currently doing in our world. It will be something so different that we can't begin to imagine it. Imagine if you could cultivate that idea of being who's in your life, of being, of, of the being, doing, loving, caring individual that is successful. You see, once you begin to tap into that idea, that change happens in your life so fast it'll make your head spin. But it's different. It's scary. It's like a drunk getting sober. His whole life has been a change. First, there's a great resistance, and he's terrible because this is all he's ever known. We find in society a comfortable manner. We're comfortable. Why should I change anything? I'm okay. But I would submit to you that once we begin to deviate from societal norm, we are already well underway on that path to say, there is something better, and it's going to domino through your life. It's going to domino with regards to your emotions. It's going to domino with your mental state. It's going to domino with your physical being. Things will begin to change. All of us are here because we are expecting that change to happen. We are waiting for something dramatic or powerful to happen in one of those blows. We are waiting to see something that's going to move the foundations of our world so that we might step over in this new and successful idea that we've been hoping for. Could be wrong, but that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> the world is in a condition of mental stagnation and spiritual chaos. If you look throughout history, you will see that every time a society has begun to adopt these higher ideas of spirituality and principle, and technology, philosophy, such as in the Middle East, you won't see a great monotheistic power come out and do its level best to destroy that and send it back. It happened in the ancient times when Judaism ushered forth to conquer the Gentiles next to us, to, to, to terrorize them and destroy these powerful kingdoms that were within their realm because they felt they had the right to do so. That was their thing. Rome was ahead of its time. It had running water. It had, you know, the philosophy from the Greek and all of this Mediterranean idea was beginning to really blossom. They had paved roads. They had aqueducts. They went all the way to Spain. They had a beautiful civilization by all accounts. With the true freedom of religion, there was a, a statue to every god that they, from every country they conquered. And about the time they got too big for their britches, a freedom fighter jumped in there and great spiritual battle ensued, and it sent the entire world into the Dark Ages. Now we're facing it again. We are a group of people all over the world. Europe is beginning to shed that yoke of bondage that was represented by Christianity and monotheism and the ideas of other men of how you might be successful. And as soon as it begins to happen, what do we see? Millions of the latest and greatest monotheistic cults come in to set us back into the dark ages. 
So we are actually, when I say confidence and manhood, I'm not just talking about us having a big paycheck. I'm not just talking about us raising children and loving our wives. I'm talking about the very future of everything we see and hope to believe to be able to hold dear is at risk. One more time. Do we want to continue that? Or are we going to take this idea to the best the best level it can be? Religious sects abound and all of them are full of controversy. Controversy of hypotheses, guesses, and half-truths about facts. Mankind has lost sight of the truth of any of these facts. It is no wonder we have shed the yoke of religious slavery to feel alive again in our ancestral faith. We have become aware of the magnificent beauty of our faith, our ancestors, the simplicity of our connection to our God and goddesses, and yet there is only someone who cannot abide the idea of the change in the representation they will ask. How can you explain the fact? We're still getting a hold on it. Where do we look for that fact? Where do we go to find a simple statement of truth or fact that we, we think it's here? Every one of us, I heard it best so I could put, put forth was <laughs> every one of us has a spark of the divine within us. I think all of us believe that. All of us have that idea within ourselves. We have some spark of the divine. The only thing that spark wants to do is rejoin that from which it originated. The falls of our ancestors. The feasting table of the gods and goddesses. It's very difficult to do that if we're taught to pull to the left or to the right. It's even worse when we're conditioned by schools and work and society to willingly engage in behaviors and thinking patterns that say, I'll just check this out for a minute. Everything stops. You don't go for it. <laughs> Once that question has been asked, there will invariably be a hypothesis. I guess. Some would call it a personal gnosis. Then another, and then another, and then righteous indignation and the fact become lost in worlds already bewildered by mass contradictory ideas. Once the Church of England was established, think of how many different sects of Christianity. There's a different church on every corner, and every one of them has a different idea about it. Here in Austria, we don't really have that yet. We have two. And they're a constant pain in our side. They are a constant blockage from us to develop it keeps us distracted. It keeps our thinking process focused on something which has nothing to do with the betterment of ourselves. <clears throat> then we'll arise various sections from the original facts, but a clear perception of a fact yields results in the realization of other facts. While I guess only serves to cover it up, it serves the purpose of a man. We see that. We deal with that. We are on the receiving end of that on a daily basis. Truth is not an opinion, nor can any opinion enlarge or adorn it. Truth is a powerful idea that cannot be changed or mitigated. We must fix our attention on the facts and avoid the wordy warfare of forcing another assumption upon a bamboozled people. <laughs> this is what we are seeing within the ranks of Muslims. We have people jumping up to conclusions and opinions and ideas that are keeping us separated from our ability to move forward. Our immediate response is knee jerk reaction is to respond, to fight back, to defend. We're manly men doing manly things and we're going to fight back. Okay? Great. How have we moved forward from that idea? Every one of us has done something in our life. Society tells you you've got to be a man, you've got to be big and strong, you've got to be, you know, you got to serve in the army, or you've got to be a cop, or you've got to do some kind of glorious, you've got to be able to fight. A household to secure a land where we might allow the proper development of the people that we care and love for. Getting distracted by these, the wordy warfare of the assumption of some other group stops us in our tracks. We lose our ability to be clear thinking and we forget that it is our thought process which determines the type of man. The facts of life are right in front of us. They can be known and understood if we abandon the ego and the blinding illusions which rampant the 
egotism to create. Man does not need to go beyond his own being to find wisdom. The facts of that being are sufficient to pass into the well of our ancestors and our God and free us from the self-imposed prison we have been taught to live. Man thinks, man is, and as he thinks, so he is. Throughout our Lord, we have an example of a rather egotistical behavior whose self-serving interest does nothing but create chaos, destruction, and pain, and misunderstanding from everyone around us. Instead of rising to the occasion to measure up and compete with someone else, he is just as likely to flip a coin and kill them instead of having to improve himself. This kind of rampant egotistical behavior runs through our thinking process as well. That's why there's focus on it. That's why there's reference to it again and again and again. Not to make the bad guy, but it is the uninspired human intellect and the rampant egotism that our society thrives on. Because that energy seems to give us power. That anger, that, that all of that idea seems to give us some kind of fuel. More often than not, when you see that stuff, you find people who have discovered this faith who are substituting that feeling for a spiritual experience. And they lose track of going beyond his own being to find wisdom. One of the reasons we have failed to see all of this is that we are usually focused on a make-believe situation somewhere in our mind that they're over watching on TV. How many times do we, how many, the media is the prime example of this. They will feed us an idea, a half-truth. There's nothing more dangerous in the world than a half-truth. And yet every day we're giving some kind of half-truth to feed this, make us, to motivate us to get us to do something that will serve their purpose and not our own. Every day we're being told, well, this happened or that happened, but it's not the whole story. And we buy into it in mass. Thousands of people spending huge amounts of energy to tap into this idea. If you feel good about that, I'm right. And we continue to spin in the same circle. We are all of us. Everyone in this room, for whatever reason, has stepped out of that. But we find another set of things to get upset about over here, don't we? And instead of moving forward with this powerful spiritual ideal, we become lost. We would rather be upset about something. It is it's crippling us. When it becomes a fact that we have the obligation and responsibility to think and act in accordance with ideas which offer us growth and opportunity, like we have found in all, we tune out, we watch TV, and we engage in a wordy argument online and indulge in those old familiar feelings of boosting our ego to be right. The subdivision of our focus from in here to out there veils our eyes and includes our understanding of our mentality. It keeps us unaware of the nature of our being. <laughs> if you have a steady job, if you have a paycheck, all of your bills are paid, and you have a little bit of money left over after that, you've got a house to live in, kids. isn't that what we've been taught? It's the valuable thing in this world. Isn't that what we've been taught that we're supposed to be doing? And yet millions of men Literally, millions of men are looking at this saying, I, there's a freedom here I feel I want to be a part of. We have, these, all of these people are unaware of the true nature of their being. We are becoming aware. In our awareness, we have been given this powerful duty and obligation to set an example that the rest of the world would want to emulate. That's a real challenge. That takes us well outside of our zone of comfort. That takes us well outside any perceived safety net that we see that society has to offer. That takes courage. To occupy our minds with things that are not is not the way of wisdom. Occupying your mind with the type of thoughts that are focused on utilizing creates power of our minds. Our minds are not separate from our being. They are one and the same, and when we focus upon them, what we love, we undertake such efforts to enrich this idea of mind, thought, and life 
are as inseparable as light gradients in color. Dark thoughts create dark life. Man is mind, is sub as mind is subject to change. He is not something made and finally complete, but has within him the capacity for progress. Those are very powerful ideas. The idea that we can focus on, let's say, let's say it's all gone south for you. Let's say you've lost your job, you've lost your wife, you're drunk, you're broke, man, I have a home. Let's say it's all gone south. What are your primary thoughts going to be about? What are you going to be thinking about? What are you going to think about? You lose it all. What are you going to be thinking about? Where'd I go from here? Well, there's that. Typically, you're going to be thinking, this sucks. <laughs> this sucks. I don't know what to do. Should I give up? Why am I still here? Can I just chuck it in? Had I got out of this? Our thought process gets wrapped up in the situation we're in. Our thoughts become entangled. We focus on how much we are in need, how much we lack, how much we hurt. Our thought process becomes focused on all the negative aspects of the situation that we're living in. How do you get out of a situation like that if you cannot find the positive to focus upon? Isn't that the measure of any faith? Isn't that the example that we see when we read the law, when we see Odin go through trial after trial? To find wisdom, to stop the deck, as it were, in his favor, and what he knows is coming. Man is subject, mind, man is mind is subject to change. When we change our mind, when we change our minds to a thinking process that is not focused on every negative thing going on in front of us, now all of a sudden there's an opportunity to become something better. I'm not sure we'll have you're not probably not going to. You're not going to find a way to do it. You've already chucked in the towel. And I don't think my wife loves me as much as she used to. She probably does it because you're thinking like that and you're acting like a turtle. <laughs> it's just kind of how it goes. That, that thinking process is what hampers our ability. <laughs> these ideas that I find in the Lord, these very powerful ideas of and food that is. Finding these wonderful concepts. When I heard Steve say, When you understand the room, you have the keys to the universe, I thought that's ridiculous. I don't, that don't make any sense to me. They just, they, they're cool words. They're, you know, they're neat symbols. They look cool on a weapon or a sword or they get tattooed on them. That's kind of cool. But when I sat down and started thinking about it, if I have the type of mindset, the type of thinking process that invariably focuses upon me being successful in this world, when I pick up a room, now all of a sudden, there's a whole different power associated with that. There's a whole new idea that goes with it. We begin to be able to understand the being, the doing, the knowing. A being is modified by every thought we think. Every experience affects our character. Every effort we make changes our mentality. This is the secret of man's degradation, but also of our power if we will utilize this process along the right choice of thought. The runes are that set of think of that, that's our right choice of thought right there. To live is to think and act, and to think and act is to change. If we are ignorant of the nature of thought, we will continue to change. We will better our works, but being aware of the power of thought, our obligation to develop the offspring is to intelligently direct the process of change for the better and only for the better. That's a high-minded, powerful ideal. But if you stop and think about it, six, seven years ago, we were having these get-togethers, small little state parks that might have kids and everybody was in there cooking and cleaning pots and doing all that stuff. And we have said again and again, I've heard Matt say it again and again, we're going to do big things. Big things are coming. Better things are happening. Big things. Look at where we are today. The adoption of a powerful, positive mental process with regards to the organization and everyone associated with it. He picked winners to be in that circle.
because they all believe in that same manner. Now look at where we are. This is but a taste of the future that we're going to have. Every individual in here can do that in his own home. And in doing that in his own home, he creates an environment where his daughter might grow up and not have daddy issues. Where his wife might feel like she is truly treasured, that the beauty that is within her is worthwhile to her husband every bit as much as it was to her father. This is the true power of what we're looking at. This is the kind of idea that changes the entire world. This is what is a threat to the great monophysitic ideologies that would tell you that someone else is going to make that determination for you. No one in here is ever going to tell you, you know, you can't do that, you're going to die and go to hell. That's not how it works. You may not enjoy the same success as everybody else, but you have the opportunity to try. <laughs> The religions of today do not know this because of a hypothetical veil which exists between their consciousness and God. It has manifested itself among our ranks out of necessity of the human condition. We have been relieved of one kind of thought, one kind of condition of the mind for a better, more empowering state of thought and being. That is the definition of a sacrifice. The thinking of right thoughts, the doing of good deeds, embodying the law of ancestral faith. What are they but a calling to a higher, nobler mode of thought energized forces urging men to effort in the choosing of thought? Meditation, loyalty, hospitality, generosity are all means which men may employ to reach a higher mode of thought. When you sit down there by that fire and all of us are enjoying each other's company, our thoughts are focused on the positive aspect. I didn't hear anybody down there last night talking about complaining about some situation in life. We were all sitting there together with each other. Every one of our thoughts was focused upon we're good. We feel good. We are here. We're here. And that kind of thought, that's the whole beautiful benefit of these things. So everybody's going to leave here and they're going to have a thought energized force focused. To go into the world and hold their hands out high, yeah, I'm also true. You feel pretty good about it. There's no need for a book before it. There's no book before it. Awakening, empowerment, and immortality. We have awoken to this conditioning which has kept us almost as slaves. We go trade our time for someone else's dollars, we get a paycheck, we go home. We make sure every bit of it is accounted for so that another group of people might have access to all of it. Mortgage, groceries, call, all of that stuff. Is that what we're meant to do? Is that who are we being bred like cattle for some other purpose? Or is there an opportunity here for us to walk away from this and begin to think bigger, grander thoughts? And if you can think it, you can do it. <laughs> it's as easy to be great as it is to be small, said by Emerson. I have made a conscious decision a few times in my life just to be small. <laughs> the fundamental difference between a great man and a small one is one of thought and mental attitude. From the lowest savage to the highest type of man, thought determines character, condition, knowledge, the ability to earn wisdom. Most of humanity moves along urged by the blind impulses of its dominant thoughts as they are stimulated called for by external things. The true thing, the sage or wise man travels swiftly and intelligently along a path of his own choosing. Imagine that. No clear example can be set to the one that Odin has set for us all. He has laid himself out a clear path. He's not confused. He would say, he's too hard, he's too harsh. No, he, doesn't, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that. You know, he has a path. He's going to follow. He knows that path is going to save as many of his people as is possible when it all fails, when everything goes south. He knows his son will have a greater opportunity to enjoy the fields of his ball than he did. His path didn't deviate from the left to the right. All of his actions are focused on earning wisdom. Not being handed out like a gift, but in earning wisdom. Focusing his thoughts. Our ability to focus our thoughts 
will determine our future. If you were worried about paying a bill last year and you continue to worry about paying a bill, chances are you are worried about paying that same bill today because that is your thought process. If you stop worrying about paying that bill and figure, you know what? Every month I've been able to pay that bill, maybe I don't need to worry about it anymore. You're going to enjoy some freedom you weren't expecting because it's taken care of. We are conditioned to worry about these things from these external sources. We are conditioned to worry about them because we saw our moms and dads struggle to do this or that. And they were taught the same thing by their parents. <laughs> It goes on and on and on and on back. The son of a king shall be silent and wise and bold in battle as well. Bravely and gladly a man shall go until the day of his death is come. When we talk about being confident as a man, what we're talking about is nobility of success. And that means adopting a mindset that it's not ruled by fear as we have been taught, that isn't focused on worry about all of these things that might happen. I see, it's, it's amazing what a small child will, will learn watching their parents. I've seen startups. I will indulge in this stuff because I'm a human being, but yeah, I get a little kick out of road rage. Stupid people, I enjoy it. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but when you see your daughter get into it, you're like, Maybe I may have should have told her that. <laughs> she picked up that conditioning to become angry and enjoy that feeling because somebody else who could care less about what's going on with you just decided to go back. That makes no sense. But we are conditioned to do it, and we are conditioned to do it in just about every aspect of our lives. We have changed the foundation of our spiritual belief. I think it would behoove us to be men in this world to begin to change the thinking process go along with this newfound spiritual freedom. To quit worrying about whether or not these things are going to be taken care of. If you're putting one foot in front of the other and you're working and you're taking care of this, you're saying you're doing all the things, these things will fall into place. Just that simple. But once we begin to think and focus on that and we begin to notice how well things are going on around us, it becomes a whole lot easier to be confident. I think that's all I got for right now. Anybody got any questions? See that? That's our future right there. They deserve to see the very best men have to offer. Ain't done. <laughs> I saw that and I believe in that as well. And uh, you know, he worked hard, he was talking about his golfing day. He was like, you know, we're going to get out. But whenever he had a chance, he earned it. He couldn't pay it. That's what he had. And he learned uh, that same house that I gave him when I got him in my home. Suddenly one day, I had to come in my house and I was going to be more work all the time. So, uh, I believe in the people I brought in my home, and I, I, I like to put it out there. Is I'm a little shy about it. I, I tell you, know, this is what needs to be done for this book club. It's what we do. And um, I don't need to feel out of grace. I need to go to the flat for it, actually. You know, Dave, you're so arrogant. You're kind of a jerk. It's like, you know what? It's, 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 Work hard, earn your way, and be king of your own domain in your house. And I think just as a mindset, we kind of flip and that's everything I talked about there. It says whenever you go home, you're the king. When you have to step for Christ, be bold and, and run your house out of it and live in it. So this is kind of some grand old reason that I think some people have seen it in, you know, the town of the ground, that we read the brand and don't think of uh, it's 
small step first, that if you keep taking the first one and the next one and the next one, living like this, suddenly you look back in the box. So, um, as I say, if you do agree by any, this is awesome right here, it's covering the house. It'd be like that. That's, yeah, that's, you know, it is, it's all about how you think, and every bit of it is about your thought process. If you, you, you can, you can tell me right now what you're, what you're most worried about, and I can probably tell you the level of success you're going to get to enjoy in any time, right now, because that, it's, it's the same for everyone. Our thinking is, we get confused. We make, we make conscious decisions to get involved in things, but when we begin to think about the amount of courage and confidence it would take to invite, to open your door, as Tacitus talks about, and let these people come into your home and eat all of your food. And then go to the next house and eat all of your food. Think about the amount of confidence and courage that takes. They must know somewhere that it's going to be pretty good. They're going to be all right. They're going to be taken care of. We live in the most comfortable society in the world. Why would we ever get wrapped up in worrying about this or that? Oh, they're going to cut the cable TV off. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We sat on the TH. Hey, you can buy a mountain. Yeah, there's nothing wi Fi. 